Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss speed, diffusion, and effusion of gases. Today's essential question What affects molecular speed, and how is that related to diffusion and effusion? Speed of a gas molecules. We already know that changing temperature will change the kinetic energy of molecules, of gas molecules, of any molecules, but gas molecules for today. Okay, an increase in temperature will result in an increase in kinetic energy, meaning more movement or greater speed. Again, we know this. A decrease in temperature will result in a decrease in kinetic energy, meaning less movement or a lesser speed. When we talk about the movement or speed of movement of the atoms or molecules in a gas sample, keep in mind that we're actually talking about the average speed of the particles in a sample. Now this is because not all gas particles in a sample move with the same speed. The motion of individual gas particles is random. So again, when we're talking about the speed of molecules in, in a sample, we're talking about the average speed. You know, what, you know the, there's some that are slower, some that are faster, like that. Okay, so we have this thing called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, which can show how many molecules are moving at a particular speed at a given instant. And it looks like I don't know how to type here. So the distribution shows, um, how about that? Just ignore that part right there. Okay, there we go. Right, let's start our discussion of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution in respect to temperature. So here is a graph, The and it's a Maxwell-Boltzmann di distribution. And what you'll see along the x-axis here is velocity. You can think of that as speed, which is velocity without direction. And on the y-axis here, we have the actual number of molecules, with the lower end being lesser molecules. And as you go up, greater and greater molecules. OK, so the curve tells us the number of gas particles moving at a certain speed. So if we start by looking at just the red curve, we can get an idea of how many molecules are moving at certain speeds. So the red curve represents a sample of gas molecules at, in this case, 200 K. And you will note that the majority of the molecules number of molecules. So the majority of our molecules are at this sort of middle velocity, right? And then a few of the molecules, a very few, are go, have a very, very slow speed. A few also have a very, very fast speed. But the majority of the molecules have this sort of middle speed, which is, which is our average speed of this of the molecules in this particular gas sample. So the peak of the curve, we we're just talking about right here, represents the most probable speed for any particular molecule, because that is the speed most of the molecules are at. OK, now let's look at the different colored curves. You will note that the red one is at 200 K. The blue one is at a temperature of 400 K, and the green one is at a temperature of 800 K. So what we're doing is we're increasing the temperature. And if you take a minute to look at that graph, what's happening? Well, um, at 200 K, the average velocity, we probably should, if we put some numbers here, it might make it easier. We'll make this 0 and 100, and the middle is about 50, okay? So you'll note that the average speed of the 200K sample is what? Maybe 25 meters per second. Um, the average velocity of the blue curve or the, this gas sample, same gas, same number of molecules, but this time they are at a temperature of 400 degrees K, the average velocity is higher, right? Maybe, I don't know, 40 meters per second. 
And if you, we increase the temperature any even more, you will note that the velocity is even higher. So the peak shifts to the right and flattens as the temperature increases because more par particles are moving at a greater speed. All right, now let's talk about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution in terms of molar mass. So we have a new graph here. Um, it's still, we've still got speed along the x-axis and number of molecules along the y-axis. Um, but this time, instead of changes in temperature, you will note that we have different gas molecules in this case. So let's, let's see if we can discuss what's, what's happening here. It looks like oxygen, on average, the molecules move slower than the average speed of hydrogen molecules. So think about this. I've kind of already given you a hint, being that the title is molar mass. Let's look at the differences in the molar mass. So hydrogen, a single hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.0079 grams, but there are two of them, right? versus oxygen, which has a molar mass of 16.00 grams, and there's also two of them. So look at the difference. The hydrogen molecules are a lot lighter than the, than the um, oxygen molecules. And helium is 4.00, so it's, it's heavier than hydrogen, lighter than oxygen, and I'm not going to do the math for all of these, but you can figure it out. So what do you think, what could you say about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution in terms of molar mass? How about by map that mapping out the speeds of different gas particles at the same temperature, it can be seen that lighter molecules move on average at greater speeds than do heavier molecules. Okay, next on the to-do list is talk about gas diffusion. So what is diffusion? The definition of diffusion is the gradual mixing of molecules of one gas with molecules of another gas by virtue of their kinetic energy, by virtue of them moving, right? So diffusion of gases actually happens fairly gradually, um, which seems a little strange because you'd think gas molecules actually move very quickly. So why, do, why is it that, that um, gas molecules spread from their source very slowly? It has to do with um, the, the fact that the gas molecules experience numerous collisions with other molecules while moving from its source. Okay, so let me see if I can draw a little picture to help make this, make this kind of clear. So say we have a bottle of something, I don't really know what, perfume I suppose, with, with gas molecules in it, and Here's an open room, and these dots here are air molecules. All right, and here is some person. I can't, I can't draw. Got a big nose. He went, when can he smell the particles of the perfume? So we got perfume particles in here, right? We break the bottle and the perfume particles start spreading out. But here's what happens. Draw a few more. As it starts spreading, it hits these air molecules. So this guy is going this way, right? He bounces off and hits this one, which makes him bounce off and hit this one. And he bounces off and hits that one. And he bounces off and hits this one. And bounces and he keeps bouncing around. So it takes a while for the gas molecule to get all the way over here. So the gas molecule does not just spread out and go straight across to this guy's nose. Instead, it takes the circuitous route here bouncing all over the tape, so it takes a while for a gas to diffuse across the room. 
All right, let's now talk about Graham's law and gas diffusion. So um, the really important bit for us for Graham's law is that lighter gases diffuse more quickly than heavier gases. Um, the definition of Graham's law or, or Graham's law is under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, rates of diffusion for gases are inversely proportional. There should be an AL here, or inversely proportional to the square root of their molar masses. And written math mathematically, it would look something like diffusion rate of gas 1 divided by diffusion rate of gas 2 equals the square root of the molar mass of gas 1 divided by the molar mass of gas 2. And there it is written more mathy. Um, but what I really want you to get out of Graham's law is just the idea that lighter gases diffuse more quickly than heavier gases. So to figure out which gas diffuses more quickly, figure out the molar mass. The one with the, with the greater molar mass is going to diffuse slower than the one with the lesser molar mass. Okay, and then the last quick topic is gas effusion. So effusion is, is similar to diffusion, except for this time, it's the process by which a gas under pressure escapes from one compartment of container to another by passing through a small opening. So um, think about effusion. An example might be, uh, here we go, me trying to draw again. We've got a balloon here that's supposed to be a balloon and it gets a little hole in it. And let's put a few gas molecules in this balloon. So there we go, we've got gas molecules and there's a tiny, tiny hole in there. Um, and and these, these molecules are under pressure because they're in enclosed space, right? So they're escaping out this hole here. Um, so that's really what we mean by effusion, very similar to diffusion, except the difference being that it's under pressure. So um, the nice thing is that the rate of effusion also follows Graham's law of diffusion, which means that um, what, what kind of molecules are going to escape from this, this container, in this case a balloon, faster? The smaller molecules, the lighter molecules. So smaller, lighter par gas particles will effuse faster than larger, heavier gas molecules. Okay, that's it. All right, you guys have a good one. That's it for today.